Okay, and welcome everybody one more time. Another video tutorial. I really appreciate the comments. I appreciate the shares, the likes, and the subscriptions. Of course, this is a new video tutorial that we're going to be um, explaining a little bit about MIDI connection. Okay. Right here, and you can see on the left side of your screen we got this usb midi this is what we got connected right now okay and i'm going to explain that in a second let me change this screen here okay we are using this m audio um keyboard controller and by the way i'm not being sponsored in any way by no company or no person okay there's no no sponsors sponsorship for me at the moment okay if someday somebody wants to sponsor me or a company i will let you know but for now today 2018 september there is no sponsoring at all <laughs> okay just to get that out of the way all right so we're using this keyboard controller the usb cable is just to power the device the controller Okay, the switch, we put it on the middle, is off, as you can see. We hit it to the right, it will turn on. Okay, you can see right here. For the USB cable, the only thing it does is just power it up. I don't have the power supply, so that's why I'm using the USB cable. This MIDI cable is a regular 5-pin MIDI cable. Okay. And it's going to be connected to the keyboard out or keyboard MIDI out right here. This is the sustain um, connector. I don't have anything connected. As you can see, I'm not using that right now. I only have connected the USB for power and the MIDI to go out from this keyboard into my controller. This is the Studio Logic SL1100. Okay, you see right there. And this is my main keyboard controller. I love it. It works perfect. The keys feel really good, like natural, but really heavy. I like it. I like them a lot. So that's why I have this one as my main keyboard. Okay, I just use this one, and I'm going to explain in a second why I use this one once in a while. Okay, bear with me. Now, going back to the screen. Okay. So here on the screen, as you can see, we got, we got the connections MIDI out from the M-Audio keyboard or the M-Audio keyboard MIDI controller into the Studio Logic MIDI in. And from MIDI out of Studio Logic, we got connected this USB MIDI cable. And I have it connected in MIDI in. Let me show you. You can see right here. I'm not sure if you can see this. It says here MIDI in. I don't know if it's visible. Okay, so this is MIDI in. The USB MIDI cable right here. Okay. I bought it on eBay. I believe it was $4. Or $5 or $4. I can't remember. Um, You could also get it on Wish. I think. I believe so. You could get it on Wish. So this is this cable is, is MIDI in here and it's going from MIDI output. Okay. So every time you connect MIDI, remember it's going from MIDI out to MIDI in. Okay. So we got MIDI output, we're gonna connect the MIDI in right here. Okay, we got it connected. All right. So the MIDI the USB MIDI cable is going to the computer. And that's how you control the virtual MIDI software. These three software that we got here. Oh, hold on a second. My bad. Okay, so these, these MIDI software that you see here, these are completely free. You don't have to pay for them. You go to the website, which I'm going to leave on the description. The link will be on the description. You go to the website and download the software. It's completely free. You could use any of them. 
I'm going to tell you how to connect it, right? And here we go. This is what the video is about, connecting the software to your computer. So that way you can see whenever you press the keys on your, on your controller, you can see, um, you can see the, the keys moving, moving around, but also because something else, and I'm going to show you in a second. Let me open the first one, which is Ridiculous. This is my software of choice, and I'm going to tell you why. Ridiculous, we got it right here. Remember, this is free. You don't have to pay for this software. Just go to the website and you download it. Okay. So you got we got it right here, Ridiculous. Go into File, Preferences, MIDI Preferences. Refresh, just in case. And the USB 2.0 should be right here. Or the USB MIDI should be right here. So you select this one. And this is why I like this key with this um, software because you got MIDI input and MIDI output. So the sound, I'm going to send it here because here I got connected my, my um, sound model, Motive. Motive um, ES rack. Okay. Hit OK. And there you go. Okay. Okay. So that's why I like this one a lot. Now, not just because of that, but because of this here. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Hold on, I say, oh, I can't. Okay, here we have, um, I'm showing the chords that I play. And that's very good. I like this a lot. Because when I make a chord, I can see, you know, which, what it is. How is the name of it? Okay. And that's why I like this a lot. Okay. Also, because what I just said, it has MIDI in and MIDI out, and that's perfect. That's great. Okay, one more time. File, MIDI preferences, and go right here. This is the input I'm using right now, and this is the output, the MIDI output. So it's going into my sound model, and that's what you hear right now. Okay. That's the multi. Okay. If you want to send it to another MIDI interface or port, you just select it right there. Okay. Also, I believe you could you could send it here. You just have to choose here what you want, what kind of um, a rompler you want to use or virtual instrument. You select it here, and I, I don't really know how to do this because I have never used it, but you could do that. You could use a rompler, put it here, and you could use it as MIDI out, okay? I don't do that. I just leave it like this. Usually, I have it connected here, but right now, for the demo purposes of the USB MIDI cable, that's why I'm, I'm doing this, okay? And this is why I like this software, because we got MIDI input, MIDI output. I have never had a problem with it. It's very, very reliable, never crash on me. It works perfect every time I open it, no problem whatsoever. Okay. I recommend it. Like I said, I'm going to leave the link on the description. Very good software. It's free. Okay, so you should go get it. Check it out. All right. Now, because of the also because of the chords, when I do um, when I play a chord, it's showing right here what it is. So that could help me, you know, to learn a little bit more chords or whatnot. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, so moving on. Next software. Hold on, let me close this completely. Okay, next software that I use is this one. Everyone Piano MIDI. Okay, it's right here. Let's open this one. Okay, so you can see as I press the, the MIDI controller, you can see right here. Now, that sound that you hear is the synthesizer of Microsoft. Okay. I don't use those sounds. I just, sometimes I just use this keyboard to show the keys that I'm playing. Okay. Remember, this is free software. And right here, oh, I'm sorry. I minimized it. Right here, this is what I do. Options. I click this. Click options. And this is where I select the MIDI that I'm using right here. The MIDI input, as you can see. Okay. Right here, audio, MIDI input. And I select here the one that I'm using right now, which is USB MIDI. Oh, it's on right here. If I turn it off, it's not going to, I believe it's not going to show the keys. There you go. Not showing the keys. Okay, so go MIDI options right here on this little arrow. Options and go audio input and select your input. Okay, in this case for me right now for this video is this one. This one I don't mess with it. I don't know. I never had used this one. Let me just. Leave it there, I don't know. I've never used it anyway. Okay. All right. And the next one that I use, oh, by the way, this here, audio source, I never mess up with this. Just leave it there where it is. To me, it doesn't really matter. I never use this, none of this. Okay, so moving on to the next one is VMPK. Virtual MIDI Piano Keyboard. This one is also free. I like guess it. Okay, so here we go. And there you have it. This one is also like um, Midiculous. You got MIDI in and MIDI out, which is great. But I like to use Midiculous because it shows the chords. And I, I love that, you know. Okay, so you go edit MIDI connection, and right here, as you can see, you select this one, the USB MIDI, input MIDI connection right here. That's the one that we're using right now, this one. Okay, this is the one that we're using right here. Okay. And for output, I, I select Microlight. Port one because here here is where I got connected my motive. Okay. In your case, you might be needing another port or it's gonna be another name because surely you don't have necessarily the micro light um USB interface, but I do, so that's why I use this one. This is the one I have. Okay. So you hit OK, and there you have it. Okay, so let me go back again to Medicolous. Okay. All right, so let me show you something that I do with the M audio keyboard. Let me go here to the screen. Okay. This is why I like to use this keyboard. Let me move this out of the way. Okay. Okay. So this keyboard. Okay. I move the knobs and the sound changes. That's why I like this keyboard. See that? So you change modulation, you change the resonance, 
you change the parameters of the sound. In other words, I think this one is echo. second i think we got sound right yep we got sound okay so this is why i like this keyboard i bought it for 40 dollars i think online it was used but i think i bought it like six years ago perfect i never had a problem with it um i never had a problem with the drivers i did not install the drivers nevertheless when i connected the usb it um, installed generic drivers and it worked perfect ever since. Okay. And it's very, very reliable. It sounds, the feel is very good. It's not heavy, it's not soft. And it got very good velocity. Okay. See that? Velocity is very, very good. Okay, that's why I like this keyboard a lot. Just if I want to add an effect when I'm recording something on the spot. Okay. That's why I have this keyboard around. I don't use it every day. Sometimes when I'm recording something, I twist the knobs just because it feels good, sounds pretty cool, okay? I know, I understand that FL Studio, you could, um, you could link or you could record something that you do with the knobs and then you could even edit it more, so that, that's pretty good. I believe all the, today all, all DAWs do that. They record um, modulations. Okay, so whatever you move here is going to be recorded. All right, just to let you know, this is very, very good keyboard. That's why I had to get rid of it. I bought it like $30, $40, can't remember. Very good. Okay, moving on. Let me go back to the screen. Okay. So, what else? Okay, we got... Some Romplers, some software. Let me show you. It goes the same way. It connects the same way. You have to select on MIDI input. You just select the, the USB MIDI, okay? Because this is connected to your controller. It doesn't matter what kind of controller you're using. You have to, if you connect this cable, you have to select this as the MIDI input port. Okay, let's get. Um, these right here, I got the M1. Okay. We got it right here. There you go. Let me see if the sound is going out. Oh, yep. Perfect. Okay, so it, it, it goes the same way. You configure it the same way. So preferences here. I have this here, not necessary. it will be your, your choice, right? You use whatever you have, whatever um, driver you want to use or whatever interface you're using is going to be here. In my case, I'm using the M-Auto Audio Firewire Solo, okay? So I'm using this driver for the sound and it's being connected. Um, is is going out from channel one and two and is being connected to a mixer and the mixer is going into my audio interface pre -sonus. okay so the midi is the same here this is the one i'm using right now if i don't choose this one it's not going to be able to sound no sound see pressing the keyboard no sound okay and move this to the side okay now if i press this if i click on it it will sound 
Okay. Oh, going back again. System preferences, MIDI settings, and I gotta choose the two the USB MIDI right here. Okay, so this is a classic core game one. I think it was very good on the nineties. It got um I don't know classic sounds or legendary sounds. If you want to call it like that. I think one of the sounds was the the regular piano. I don't know where it is because I'm not very familiar with it. I don't know. And it got like a dino piano, which people used to use it a lot. I think it was that one. I don't know. I don't know because back then I didn't play keyboard, so I'm not very familiarized with this one. But I got it because it was a good deal, so I bought it from from the website from Cork website. I got it. So this is supposed to be a very good um, deal keyboard. I don't know. Okay, another one that I have. And I use is this one. Okay. And you connect it the same way. All right. We go here, um, MIDI, and you select the USB 2.0 or the, the USB MIDI. In my case, it's 2.0. I don't know if, if when you use yours, it's going to say 2.0, but you got to select USB and MIDI. Okay. And I have it connected. Like I said, <clears throat> I got to send it here to Firewire Solo because I have the Firewire Solo connected into a mixer and the mixer is going into the interface. Now, why do I do that? <clears throat> Good question. I'm sorry. Good question. Because is is being filtered i'm using a bb and i'm using a a behringer something that has like a tube i don't remember the name so i'm, I'm processing processing the sound through that and then it's going into a mixer and then from the mixer is going into the presonos audio interface okay so that's why I connect it here and I'm not connected connecting it into the audio box. Okay. Normally it will be audio box because that's presonus, but I got it here on M Audio Firewire solo. Okay. And let's check out another one that I use a lot is this one analog lab from Arturia okay wait for it takes a little bit to open okay any question let me know remember on the comment any suggestion any request let me know in the comments also I appreciate people who's been subscribing and people that have been sharing my videos and commenting I really appreciate that Okay, let's wait for a little bit because it takes a little bit to open the, the analog lab. Also, the analog lab um, is heavy on your CPU, so you might want to um, check on that because it will eat up your resources on your CPU really fast. It sounds really good, though, but it's very heavy on CPU. So just to let you know. Wait for it. It takes a little bit to open. And I believe. And I'll have you around here. Okay. I don't know. Should be there. Come on, analog lab, analog app. 
Let me try one more time. Open. There you go. Okay, here we are. Okay, so this one is real good. It has a whole bunch of sounds. Okay, you got classic synths, classic pianos, a whole bunch, whole bunch of sounds. It's connected the same way. You just go here, this arrow right here. Okay, audio settings. And here you choose, I'm choosing, like I said, line or M audio. Okay, one and two. So it's going out line M audio one and two. That's the Firewire solo. And for MIDI, I'm using the USB MIDI right here. Okay. So when I press my controller, the keyboard of my controller is going to work. Okay. So we got here a whole bunch of sounds. Let's go into pianos. Okay. Okay, so if I want to open any rompler and I want to record it, th that sound into FL Studio, all I just do is open FL Studio. Okay. Open that. Give me one second. Okay, bear with me for a second. So it opens. Okay, so we got it right here. Okay. So if I want to record this sound um, of this rompler into FL Studio, it's already connected. Let me show you what I did. Okay. Let's go right here into the mixer. Select a channel. And this is where the sound is coming in. Mic line in. Seven and eight, as you can see right here. See this? Okay. So it's going in this seven and eight. So that's why it's getting, it could be recorded into FL Studio. Okay. Remember, all you have to do is um, right click here, select audio. If you want to record MIDI notes, select notes. In this case, I want to record just audio. Arm the track right here. Put the volume up. Okay. Arm it here. And it's ready to go. Ready to record. Okay. Let's make a test. Okay, remember what I said, it's very heavy on CPU, so you got to be careful. Okay, so that's what it got recorded. Let me show you on the playlist. Oh, where is it? Where did it get recorded? Oh, I thought it got recorded. Hold on. Uh, see it here. Oh, where did it go? I thought it recorded somewhere. Oh, right here on channel 100. <laughs> okay, that's why I couldn't see it. So let's go here. And this is what I just recorded, right? Okay. Let me see if we're getting that audio out.
Oh, no. No, you cannot hear it because I don't have it here. Um, I believe you could be able to hear it. Oh, sorry about that. Messed up. My bad. Okay, I can't do that because it creates a loop. So this is going out. Let me see here. Hold on, if I do this, oh, can't hear it. Wait. Wait a second. Hold on. Wait a second. Bear with me for a second. There you go. Now you can hear it. Okay. What happened is that I had this one on. And if I have this one up on seven, it will create a loop. So it was going back into into the the program. Like like a loop. So that's why I did that that noise. Okay. So there you have it. So if I want to record from the motif or from any rompler or synthesizer. That's how I got it connected. Remember, you just go here in your DAW, go to the mixer, or wherever you have to select the inputs and output. This is where it's going in. Okay, arm it, give the volume, and you're set to go. Hit the record. Remember, it has to be audio, and you're good to go. Okay, now let me close this. And let me open Medicolous. Where it is? Oh, it's right over here. If you want to record MIDI notes, remember, don't select audio, select MIDI, or I'm sorry, select notes. And you have to enable the MIDI input. In this case, right here, MIDI input, we're using USB right here. We have we got to enable. So we should have signal here. Hmm. Okay, that's the multi. Let me close this for a second. Hold on a second. If we have this enabled, we should be able to get those MIDI notes into FL Studio. That's weird. Oh, okay, I see why. Okay, I forgot about this one. Oh, it's enabled, my bad. I thought it was not enabled, it is. Okay, so MIDI settings. Oh, sorry. Let me add one MIDI channel. I think we do have one. Oh, we're right here. We should be able to have this here. That's weird. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay, not bad. Didn't know we had to put it on one. There you go. It was just to enable it. And now it's, it's working good. No problem. Okay, good. Okay, so now we got signal, the MIDI signal in. Okay, I'm playing the keyboard. You can see right here. Okay, so remember, go to, if you want to record that, or if you want to record, not that, but MIDI, I'm sorry, MIDI notes, select notes. And go into here, piano roll. And you can see this is lighting up. Okay, so you just hit record. Oh, sorry about that. I think it got, let me erase this one. Okay, so this is what we just recorded right now. Okay, 
to be able to hear it, you need to select the MIDI port number one on the output. You first have to enable this MIDI output. And on MIDI settings, you need to select the output to one. See that? Port one. And on the channel, you go to the channel right here. We have to select this because if you don't select one, it's not going to sound well. That's in my case, my port, the one that I'm using. If I select zero, you won't be able to hear it because the sound module, the motive is on port one. Okay. Also, if I don't have the right channel, it's not going to sound. So it has to be on channel one because that's the channel that got recorded. Okay. That's why you could hear it. I believe you could hear it. Let me see. Yep. Okay. So that's how you do all those MIDI connections. Kind of crazy, but that's how it is. In my case, I had to figure that out because I don't like to read any manuals or anything. I just figure things out because that way I could remember them better. If I start reading, I'm not going to remember everything I read. Okay, if you like to read, well, then go for it. In my case, I don't really like to read that much. I just like to figure things out. Okay, so I really thank everybody for watching the video. And like I said, subscribe if you haven't. Thumbs up if you want to like the video, if you like to, if you want a comment, a request, or any comment. Any question do you have about media or audio, I'll try to answer. Okay, and I thank everybody for watching the video. See you on the next one. God bless.